we tend to see this as one of our most approachable houses. It seems more inviting. It seems less imposing than some of our other sites. But nonetheless, in 1815, when this house was complete, it was one of the best houses around for miles. It was clearly meant for William Kirkland as a showplace to demonstrate, really, that he had made it. William Kirkland was an immigrant. He immigrated from Scotland. He found success here in North Carolina as a merchant, and I think that's why he wanted to construct Airmount, really, as a sign of his success. This was a huge statement. I mean, this was a monumental statement. Nobody was building a major building in brick at the time that Kirkland thought about building this house. It was unheard of, and I think it made a big, big impression on the townspeople because once this was finished, there was a boom in interest in building out of brick. The Presbyterians caught on right away, and then the local mason, St. Matthew's Episcopal Church. Kirkland's major statement was not outdone until 1845-46 when Orange County completed its major Orange County courthouse. William Kirkland was really pushing the envelope. He clearly wanted to represent himself and his family in the landscape in a particular way, in a way that showed he was a man of learning, that he was a man of the world. I think in all these things, what it's telling us is that William Kirkland was a very ambitious man who wanted to use architecture to demonstrate his ambitions. So we have to remember that when Dick Jenrette bought Airmount in 1985, he really turned this into the, one of the most important historic restoration projects in the state of North Carolina. The restoration of this house was done to such a high level of care and accuracy with attention to every detail that you could imagine, paint analysis, that just the fine level of craftsmanship throughout was what kind of set a precedent for, for the level that could be achieved by a careful restoration. He then went about very meticulously trying to find original objects that had been part of the Kirkland family home, knowing that eventually it would be essentially a gift to the wider public. Here in the collection at Airmount, we have a piano that William Kirkland purchased in 1806 by John Broadwood and Son that he likely purchased for his daughters. We have a portrait of Kirkland by a local artist, Jacob Marling, that according to family tradition, has always hung over the mantle in the dining room. And his dining table basically stayed with the house, passing down from one generation to the next. And it was one of the objects that Dick Jenrette acquired when he acquired the house. We can look at Airmount today and appreciate the beauty of the building, but we have to understand this was just one part of a very active landscape. If we could turn the clock back to 1815, this house wasn't sitting idly by itself on a hilltop. It was surrounded by service structures that are now gone. We look out the windows of Airmount, we see that there's another story. We are knowledgeable that enslaved persons were here, we're knowledgeable that they were working, but there's still so much more that we don't know. And that's what we're looking to do in this partnership. We're looking to hammer out the historical narrative as best as possible. Enslaved people produced some of the most beautifully ornate, masterfully skilled products that we had. When you remove any of those stories, you're chipping away at that truly beautiful piece of material culture, which is worth preserving. We are very dedicated to taking the history of these sites and really delving much deeper into the multiple layers. And we'll have to use new technology like ground penetrating radar and maybe eventually archaeology to uncover the Airmount in its entirety. Airmount, in many ways, is Dick's gift back to his home state of North Carolina. It's why he lavished so much care and attention on the house and its collections, and why Airmount was the very first of his properties to go public as part of the organization. Airmount was the first point of access for the public in the 20th century. And now we have to reconsider what access is in the 21st century. We hope to be trailblazers in the realm of, of digital preservation and education, creating learning modules and digital interactives that can engage all of us. Our challenge is how do we continue to set a national example and make Airmount every bit as relevant, not only to the town of Hillsborough, but to the state, to the country, and beyond. We appreciate your support from the past. We hope you'll fully engage in supporting this effort today, and we look forward to your ongoing support tomorrow.